course and I has do. Been, has been a, a mentor to myself since I started university, actually, and since I met you, and has truly shaped the way I thought about and based societies, and has also led truly by example, and has facilitated one of the workshops, and I hope those who attended found it useful as well. Um, please, please think about questions as well throughout, throughout this talk, and at the end we'll have um, some time to ask him specifically about these questions, because he has to leave early today, and Michelle will continue with our panel discussion. So say it has to be fun to think. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi tayyibin al-tahirin wa sahbihi al-muntajabin. Obviously the introduction of my dear brother Hamas Sahib represents the purity of his heart rather than the reality. I will talk about activism inspired by Islam. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib has said that opportunities pass like the clouds. So make sure you grab the good opportunities. Life at university is a major opportunity for you. It's a major opportunity, a good opportunity. Don't waste it. Otherwise, you will be left with nothing but regret. But opportunities to do what exactly? To be active. To join this flowing river of followers of Ahlul Bayt, of Muslims who want to make a difference in life. Over the next few minutes, I will shed few ideas. I will talk about few points that hopefully will shed some light into what you need to do at university, inspired by Islam. Brothers and sisters, First of all, you need to seek knowledge. I said it in the workshop and I'll say it again. You need to use the time at university to seek knowledge about Islam. You will, inshallah, do amazingly your academic careers, but please use the time at university to seek some Islamic knowledge. The principles, the basics of our different categories of Islamic sciences. The other thing that you need to learn from university, apart from academia, religious education, is you need to learn about people's lives. Reach out to the people around you. Learn from them. Their different cultures, their different religions, their different experiences, their different upbringings, is full of ideas and concepts and heritage that you should be exposed to. This is not to say that Islam is not enough for you, but by you studying the lives of others, you will get a deep insight about life. It will give you experience that you need to have truly activism inspired by Islam. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib has in his letter, sallallahu in his letter to Imam al Hassan, which some of you have read. Inshallah, we'll all read. He has at the beginning a, a paragraph that says, I have studied the lives of people before me. I've walked as if I've walked their ways and as if I was one of them. So if Ali ibn Abi Talib is saying we need to learn from history, from modern history, from the history of people around you, then you should be doing the same. Time at university is time when you're exposed to a lot of people. Reach out to them, learn about their lives, learn what they, about where they come from. What's their experience? What happens in their societies, in their families? They will either increase your confidence in Islam or it will tell you what to avoid. So academia, Islamic education, and learn about life from people's lives. And for this, of course, you need to mix. You need to mix with people. You need to be proactive. You need to reach out to fellow Muslims and non-Muslims. Don't expect people to come to you. We want you to make difference at university and beyond. Don't expect people to knock on your doors. You have to reach out. You have to have this courage of coming out of your comfort zone 
your Ahl al-Bayt society, in which all the members are with you on the same wavelength, and they're all your friends, they're probably your neighbors. You need to come out of this and reach out, challenge yourself. Go and knock, knock on other people's doors. We need you to join the Islamic societies. I repeat, we need you to join the Islamic societies, not Ahlul Bayt societies. Join Ahlul Bayt societies and go and be members of the ISOX as well. If you want to make a difference to people's lives, you have to be with them. Not as an agent, you don't have a hidden agenda, you don't want to convert the world. But I'm assuming that you have something to offer the world, which I will be coming to towards the end. And if you're not out there with the people, you can't change the world. You can't convince them about your approach, about your take. The followers of Ahlul Bayt should come out of this mentality of two camps, the Shias versus the Sunnis. In my assessment of the situation, it is not two camps. I like to think of Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salamu alayhum as this candle, the source of light at the heart of the Ummah. And the followers of Ahlul Bayt are the closest people to them. And as you go further away from the source of the light, the light will get weaker and weaker and weaker. And that's what the rest of the Ummah, the Sunni Muslims, your Sunni brothers and sisters, they're out there in the periphery. We're not two camps. There is the Ahlul Bayt, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhum, the real inheritors of the Sunnah of the Prophet. We should be, inshallah, the closest to them. And what we're trying to do is to try and reach out for the person next to us, who's slightly further away, and bring him to Ahlul Bayt, to real Islam. We are not two camps. So for this, you need to be with your brothers and sisters. And don't talk to me about the few Wahhabis or the few extreme Salafis who keep attacking you. There is an ocean of Muslims who are just waiting for your hands to extend to them and say we are brothers and sisters. And also I want you to join the Islamic society and join other societies. Let Ahlul Bayt Islamic society be your platform in which you move outwards to people. You use your network, the support that you have, the community, the ummah that's behind you under the leadership of the Hawza, the most noble institution we have under its leadership. You can move out from the plas this platform to reach out to non-Muslims in their societies. Look for societies who serve a noble cause. Blood donation, bone marrow donation, feeding the homeless, poverty across the world, pollution, renewable energy, look for noble causes. Look for societies who serve them and join them. The measurable outcome should be, after your three years at university, four years at university, is that people will remember you. They will remember the followers of Ahlul Bayt, the Muslims, as part of society, as an active part of society. They'll remember your good character. They'll remember your positive influence. And I hope, I hope I live to see people saying, not only we had Muslims with us in these societies to find noble causes, Muslims led society to reach these noble causes. Not just joining, start by joining. Let people find you, followers of Ahlul Bayt, across in a society. Inshallah, one day, it doesn't matter you're a minority, I don't care. It's not the majority of the people who change the world. It's not. It's never been. Read history. Study it. Even revolutions, they were never done by the, the majority of the people. Even the people of Egypt, when they came to the street, they came out to the street. The assessment is maximum there was 4 million people in the streets of Cairo. The population of Egypt is over 80 million. 5% of the people took to the street, 95 were at home watching TV. So don't tell me we're a minority. Go out there. 
and help fix the world. The soldier of Imam Mahdi, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, the soldiers of Imam Mahdi are those who are ready to help him in his mission to fix the world. How could you fix the world if you have no idea what sort of, what sort of problems are out there? If you want to really prepare for the reappearance of the Imam, if you want your activism to be truly inspired by Islam, use the Ahlul Bayt Islamic Society platform to reach out to fellow Muslims and fellow non-Muslims and serve all different noble causes around. Hopefully we'll start by helping. And I'd love to see you all leading, inshallah. Thank you very much for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay. Any other questions before that? I was even waiting to answer for this question. <laughs> okay. 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 We'll, we'll have time, inshallah. It's not a problem. We have time. So the question is why do we have to be with people who don't like us? Obviously, I heard a few people saying, let's just dissolve Ahlul Bayt societies and join ISOC, and I said, don't. I'm not a man who's going to compromise his work. Yeah? No one's asking you to shed your identity or let go of what you know, we worked hard for years to establish. You know? What we're saying is, number one, go out and do your things with the concept that, trust me, most people around you don't actually hate you. There is a minority of people who are influential who will talk about you and change people's perception about you. If you don't join them in the Friday prayer, if you don't break your fast with them, this minority will become a majority. So don't compromise your work. Do what you want to do. Lead. In fact, this is what I always said. The programs of Al-Bayt societies should move on from discussing history, even though history is very important. But you should find a practical application. Al-Bayt societies should be leading in discussing what, we, what the brother said is our own thing. We should be discussing poverty around the world, freedom in journalism, freedom of speech, transfer of information, equality in society. In Britain. We should be doing this. Sunni brothers, people who you might think some of them are influenced to us, will join. But you have to reach out with them. You have to break your fast with them. You have to pray with them. Not with a hidden agenda, but to show them the good nature of what, you, of what we really have of good character and saviour to the world. And so just to add to that, I think we, I mean, if we, maybe if you speak to some of the brothers of the society, the sisters of society, there might actually be some examples of where some societies, they started off a lot more like enemies um, and it felt that kind of uh, very tense atmosphere and over the years that's changed because of the individuals that have become closer to us. Um, and we found that the societies have changed because, like say in Turkey, the minorities don't become the majority, they become even smaller than the minority as well. Um, we have another question there, just to ask. Uh, this has actually got a, um, a question, it's actually been from my experience. Um, I actually joined ISOC and I became head sister, and I noticed lots of events happening which was not sadly against the Ahlul Bayt. So, Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. In that case, I've already seen you leading then. And I think, I think, I think it's, it's more difficult in some places than others, and I appreciate that. I think every place is very unique and very different. But I think it's the, the concept that they're talking about that we need to work towards. Can I get another question? Um, we see quite a lot, uh, a lot of activism within the Ahlul Bayt society, and mashallah, it's, it's really developing through time. But it seems mm. that straight after university, 
that sort of activism slows down quite a lot throughout because our institutions don't seem to be there. What do you think about this? And specifically from the brothers and sisters angle, you see, I don't know, in this room, 60% sisters, maybe even more, and maybe even the society. But then when it comes to after, you don't have that. So what do you think we need to do to try and ensure that this activism and the, the strength of the whole community can be a leverage going forward in, in the community? Okay. So the question is, Bal Muqtad is saying, it's, a, it's excellent, progress is being made in Ahlbayt societies. Students are, alhamdulillah, taken to a different level. But Bal Muqtad's point was about what happens after university? We seem to just disappear. You're absolutely right. I like to think of it as it was the case, because we are starting to form channels in which professionals do give back to the community. Um, myself and Mustafa Field, we formed the Social Development and Revival Foundation, and we're trying to make it as a channel to help brothers before university get ready for university, training leadership skills, and also post-university, we have a professional leadership course happening, inshallah, for professionals. Sorry, students, professionals only. And inshallah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. The course is for brothers and sisters. And also we're trying through the channel, so the foundation, to channel Muslims' professional activities to give back to mainstream society, to develop society. But you're absolutely right. It's a small step. Uh, I ask for Allah's blessings. On it, inshallah. You might just quickly add that um, you came in from Ocean Hill, sorry, but you could join the Islamic Community Society, which came in from the professional. <laughs> Excellent. So I repeat that you could join the Islamic Community Society to channel your activities once you're professionals. The Shia professionals of London are out there for networking. So we're making slow progress. Inshallah, we'll catch up with the, with the students. MSC is already leading, Absox Illumini, so if you're out there, you will be, you will be, inshallah, helped and directed. Any more? Yeah, we also have the same thing. We have, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, like, I, I, I don't think Maqdad uh, should have, would have asked that question if he knew, sorry. Uh, if, um, I, I think in general, um, with the Absox, I think it's, it's not that difficult to bring back the alumni into your Absox, um, to give back in a different way, or to even partake in the activities that you have going on. So professionals could give back. I think the main vision is, whether it's the IOS or the Illumini or the Social Development Foundation or coming back, is to have the right vision. The right vision is use, the, use Islam as a platform, as a foundation, and reach out to mainstream society. Look what the problems are. Find, present this religion as a solution-based religion, not just as religion which has rituals and prepares you for life after death. That's not what Islam is. Islam does prepare you for life after death. Islam does have rituals that we are immensely proud of and we won't let go of it no matter what people say. But also this religion has solutions, has answers. We need to be with the people out there, find what the problems are, find the inspirations that Islam have, and give it there. Muhammad Baqar al-Sadr made an attempt back in the 70s, sorry, back in the 50s, when he wrote his books, Our Philosophy and Our Economy. We should be following the same footsteps. We should be looking at Islam, what are the problems of society around us, and help provide answers. Maybe we won't get there next year, but hopefully, through different channels for students and professionals, this is the direction you're looking into. This is world poverty. This is renewable energy. This is financial model. This is family values, which are lacking in Britain. You know, 25%, 20% of children in the UK live with single parents. How could I take something from Islam to help these people? So this is the vision. Whatever the channel is, professional student, this is your vision. Inspired by Islam, solution-based religion. 
think I should stop here. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum. Something more than Thank you.